Hi everyone, I'm Mary, and today we're looking at more of Journey to the West by Overly Sarcastic Productions. This is part two, the Journey to the West. They're they're just calling it that. Apparently, the monkey had a special name. This one's just going to jump right into what apparently is the main book. I haven't read it, and I've been told it's very very dry. So I'm going to enjoy the summary. Otherwise, it's Overly Sarcastic Productions. There's a link below to their video. Hit it up if you haven't already. And if you enjoy it, leave a like, subscribe, and tell me what I missed because yeah, yeah, I, I yeah, I'm aware. So let's get started. Last time on the journey to the west, the mystery really? monkey case Dragon Ball Z Kong, intro. After achieving nice. immortality, six ways from Sunday was brought down by the forces of heaven. Only six. Honestly, I think by the end it actually did hit five. So that wasn't even a joke. Heaven and placed inside I could have flown. Oh, you could fly. Trigrams to be rendered down into an immortal elixir. However, did it work? Our hero proved too powerful for this scheme and broke free, wreaking even more havoc. In okay, this might just be me, but is that the actual DBZ recap background music? It's been so long since I heard it, I actually don't remember. But if anyone does, let me know. Heaven, but his reign of terror was abruptly ended when he was imprisoned by the heavenly Buddha beneath Within? the Five Phases Mountain. Where yeah, he exactly. Also, his hands. Oh, him having Eiji knows so for Buddha returns food. to his home, the Thunderclap Monastery, where he spends oh, that, a relaxing that 500 years writing up three baskets of scripture. Now, these three scriptures are apparently so powerful that they are capable of redeeming even the most sinful of sinners. Well, sounds fishy to me, but hey, I'm not the guy with the universe in the. Yeah, that's definitely not a plot point at all. Palm of his hand. So these maze ball for. scriptures need to be delivered to the land of the east in order to spread Buddhism to the sinful folk who live there. But there's just one problem. For some reason, Buddha can't deliver them himself. So they need to find someone in the land of the east who can make the journey to the western heaven to pick up. Really? That's the entire point of Journey to the West is literally going there to pick it up and coming back. Because it's the journey of spreading Buddhism, yeah, and because they're acknowledging three religions, they definitely have the preference, which they explained in the previous episode, yeah. Okay, honestly, this makes a lot more sense now. It's literally get the MacGuffin, bring the MacGuffin back, and then explain why your religion is here. Okay, that actually makes a lot of sense. Pick up the scriptures and then return with them. Our friend the Bodhisattva Kuan Yin volunteers to find such a person, and after receiving five magical artifacts to give to the scripture pilgrim, she goes off eastward to find someone worthy five? of making the journey to the west. Roll credits. So Kuan Yin and her disciple Moksha head out along the route the scripture pilgrim oh, will back. have to take as a way to test the waters and make sure the guy can make it through in the first place. Their first encounter with a murderous river spirit three minutes out from the Thunderclap Monastery is not exactly encouraging. But He's Kuan dead. Yin persuades the guy to chill out and wait for the pilgrim, and then to join and aid him on his quest, with the added bonus that he'll be redeemed for the crime that got him exiled to the river in the first place. Oh. He accepts the offer and is given the name Sha Wu Ching, or Sandy for short. Don't ask me how Sandy is short for Sha Wu Ching. So Wait, Sandy was the actual name in Chinese? I mean, that's a nickname you would get in English. Or I guess Sandy, but maybe they're spelling it differently. Huh. Kuan Yin and Moksha continue on their merry way, whereupon they encounter a pig demon wielding a huge rake. He and Moksha fight for a little bit until he notices Kuan Yin and immediately stops the fight in favor of asking her for forgiveness, because he's made something of a habit of eating people who come along the road. You know, because he's a demon. Kuan Yin again suggests that he join the pilgrim too when he- Shh, there are literally no consequences here. Oh my god. Oh uh, yes, I'm sorry I eat people because of what I am. Also, literally that was never mentioned anywhere else the demon came up. So this is literally just them going around and setting it up. Oh my god. This is... This is funny as hell. Usually you get the party. The party is being set up here, though. ...comes along this way and thus be forgiven for the whole eating people thing. Sometimes and the murder just happens. And Kuan Yin is putting this pilgrim in pretty questionable company. Kuan Yin gives him the name Chu Wu Neng, Pigsy for short, and heads off, leaving Wu Neng to remain strictly... I have made a huge mistake. Yes, yes you have. Just don't eat the pork. There's a joke in there about... Uh, Long pork? I'm not going to make it, though. Because I have admittedly low standards. ...vegetarian until the pilgrim arrives. So they continue on. Wait, you're going to be surprise, a... ...surprise, they encounter yet another, another charming number? individual who could potentially help our as-yet-nebulous pilgrim. Can you tell that this story is the origin of a lot of anime tropes? In this case, our colorful character is a young dragon who accidentally set fire to his dad's palace a little and for this transgression against... <laughs> oh my god, I love this. <laughs> Sorry, just the idea of, like, just the dragon being... Oh, that was a mistake. <laughs> love the art she's using here. And yeah, the anime tropes, it's like, I can think of so many at every step along the way, and it's actually kind of fun to just pick out every piece and think what anime was inspired by this specific sequence. Huh. I, I won't do it, but it is tempting. Fire safety has been sentenced to death by the Jade Emperor. That was extreme. Pardon the young dragon, and then she directs him to a nearby river, where she instructs him to turn into a white horse when the pilgrim passes by to help him reach his destination. And anyway, they continue on, only to encounter an unexpectedly luminous mountain, the Mountain Dude, of Five Phases, move. and with it, the imprisoned Monkey King. Really? He just <laughs> do not. 
Does it say remove? I think it says remove. I could be mistaken, though. Counter an unexpectedly luminous mountain, the mountain of five hey, down here. phases, and with it, the imprisoned monk. Hey, didn't I fight you one time? Yes. Cool! Apparently, this person just remained a kid for that many years. Okay, sure. Why not? King. So Wukong's like, Quan Yin, how's it going, girl? Great to see you. It's been really lonely for the past 500 you years. You scratch my nose? You know, nobody ever comes by to visit. And Quan Yin's like, yeah, that's great. Listen, I'm about to go find someone to make a pilgrimage for me. He'll be coming by soonish. He's going to release you from this mountain, and then you need to help him get where he's going. You got that? And Wukong's like, 10-4, good buddy. Yep, I am just all about that virtuous mission. Just so Quan Yin and there. Cho arrive in the city of Chang'an and disguise him there. themselves so as not to attract too much attention. An average citizen! I just... <laughs> I'm sorry, there's... Is the freaking classes. Oddly enough, it really does change th this, this person's face. Ah, what did I just press? Okay, that's a thing that this does. I did not know about that. That is interesting. Like to Chuen Zong for happens, wherein Chuen Zong has to present a memorial to the Tang Emperor. Quan Yin takes the opportunity to oh, steal geez. the show by revealing herself in all her glory to the court and officially requests a volunteer from the audience to, really go to, to go to the Western Heaven and retrieve the Tripitaka, which is the official name for the thing the Buddha made. I'm sorry, the what? To volunteer from the audience to go on the pilgrimage to go to the western heaven and retrieve the tripitaka which is the i okay am i the only one who heard triple taco like it's not just me right their MacGuffin isn't actually called the triple taco okay this just became an average saturday night at a frat house the court and officially requests a volunteer from the audience to go on the pilgrimage to go to the western heaven and retrieve the tripitaka which is the official tripitaka tripitaka okay uh <laughs> I'm still going to call this the triple taco. There's no way I'm not. Name for the it's thing probably the possible. Chuen Zong obviously volunteers, just Virtuous? as planned, and Chuen Zong is given the by name Tripitaka and sent on his merry way with a horse and two oh attendants God. to help him. Don't get too attached to them, though, as the party is captured by demons almost immediately and Tripitaka's two attendants are killed and eaten. Oh, Next geez. Up. So the demons that finish explained. their attendant buffet and bunker down for the night, leaving poor Tripitaka to ponder his exciting Five future as lunch meat, when suddenly a mysterious old man appears out of nowhere and frees him, and Tripitaka's like, Where the heck did you come from? And the old man's like, Don't ask stupid questions. Here's your horse. So Tripitaka and the old man zip out of the cave and I'm sure this won't be important at all. I wonder if this is the start of the mysterious older mentor trope. Tripitaka goes to thank him, only to find that he's vanished, leaving a note explaining that he was the gold star of Venus himself, providing a helpful bit of oh, divine yeah. intervention. So Tripitaka goes on by himself for Literally about half a day, only to discover that he really doesn't have the constitution for all this questing nonsense, and he and his horse are just about done with everything. <laughs> Snakes, lions, bears, no tigers though, okay. Why am I on so useless on my own? Why couldn't I have been a Shaolin monk? Were Shaolin monks even around at this time period? And the horse is even done with him. Oh my god. Think when who should come to the rescue but a friendly, boisterous hunter named Po Chin, who spooks up, all nerd? the beasties that were harassing Tripitaka and offers to guide him to his home. So Po Chin and his family have Tripitaka over for dinner, which is slightly awkward because Tripitaka is extremely vegetarian and Po Chin's family hunts all their food, but they ah. handle it gracefully and Tripitaka further endears himself to no, no, the imposition is mine. Ah, I'm a terrible host. Where do we keep the kale? Oh my god, that is horrible. Why would you actually feed that to someone? People don't actually eat that. It's basically like spinach, but downgraded. Why would someone willingly... Oh to the family when he accidentally pacifies the ghost of Pochin's father, like you do, which prompts what? Pochin to offer to guide Tripitaka to the... Accidentally? Okay. But this is easier than traveling alone, huh? You know it. The more the merrier. He's going to die immediately, isn't he? The mountain on the border of the Tang Empire to ensure no further hijinks ensue. Did uh, say hijinks? So as it turns out, the mountain they get to is not than Five Phases Mountain, where our good buddy Sun Wukong hey, is still languishing. So Wukong's like, yo, kid, are you that pilgrim guy? Quan Yin said you'd be coming by to let me out. And Tripitaka's is like, awesome. How do I do that? That mountain looks kind of heavy. And Wukong's like, you just got to climb to the top and peel off the golden seal. Why not throw a rock at it? So Tripitaka manages Big to get rock. the seal off the mountain, and after he backs off to the minimum safe distance, Wukong breaks the mountain in half and zips on over. So yep. Tripitaka and Sun Wukong continue westward together. Aw oh, man, I missed my clothes. That's not clothes. That's a tiger you skinned. Semantics. <laughs> oh my god. I'm, just, I'm just not even touching this one. Not even touching this one. They've hardly gone ten feet down the road when suddenly they're beset by bandits. So Wukong's like, don't worry, master. I know exactly what to do in this situation. And Spin? proceeds to kill all the bandits with his trusty stick thing. But Tripitaka... This is not sufficiently zen. <laughs> I love how he's just recoiling. Like, yeah, Wukong, he get kicked out of anyone. He's just having fun right now, being able to move. Also, probably scratch his nose, but seriously, 500 years without being able to scratch your nose if you had an itch? Ooh, that is evil. Tuck is like, son, we don't kill people. And Wukong's like, I think you mean you don't kill people. Technically and accurate. Is like, no, no, you're Buddhist now. Buddhists do not kill. And Wukong's like, oh. Oh, oh, 
that is loaded. I mean, um, there's a few types of protests that involve people going out with a flash, and I'm not going to go into more detail on YouTube, because that would definitely hit terms and conditions. Ooh, look at Mr. Big Shot over here telling me who I can and can't kill, and storms off in a huff, which, if you'll recall his not inconsiderable mobility, means the Monkey King is over the horizon Later, before Dork. Trippetake can You're get supposed a to help me. Trippetake he heads did. off on his own for a bit when he runs into a mysterious old woman holding a fancy shirt and cap. So the old lady's like, hey, what's the matter, kid? You look like a... a he runs shirt into him. a mysterious old woman holding a fancy shirt and cap. So the old lady... A shirt and... Is oh, a shirt and cap? heads off on his own for a bit when he runs into a mysterious old woman holding a fancy shirt... Cap! Cap was like, that's a cat? What did she do to it? I mean, they already skinned the tiger, but... I would have sworn she said cat. Certain cat. So the old lady's like, hey, what's the matter, kid? You look like a super-powered disciple just totally ditched you or something. Yeah. And Drippetak is like, you got it in one, mysterious old woman. <sighs> If only I had some way to discipline him, maybe the story could actually progress. And the old woman's like, funny you should bought, say that. Uh, May I this? recommend that you give him these fancy duds, and then recite this spell? I have this weird feeling that it'll stop causing so much trouble if you do. And Tripitaka's is like, what? Legit. Then the old lady turns into a beam of light and vanishes because she was really Quan Yin. So I have no idea. This is so shocking. Is he literally just getting through this because people are hand-holding him the entire way? Yeah. Yeah, he is. Honestly, the chest is... Or chest. The test isn't so much... Can he do it? It's, can a guy who admittedly has no aptitude to do this just keep it up long enough to do it? Not bad. It's not so much taking the punch, it's, you know, being able to survive it. Even though they're making sure he can. So, so thus far, far talk is two for two for old people secretly being gods. Meanwhile, Wukong yeah. is off having a nice little tea party with a dragon. How's the Buddhism thing going? We broke it off. Artistic differences. <laughs> dragon Emperor, who suggests that he go back to Tripitaka, right? Don't you think something that important is a take two? Ah, uh, I guess. Uh, I love this. abandoning enlightenment and true immortality over a single argument. Wu Kong zips back westward, blowing past Quan Yin in the process, who- Son Yushin, already on it! Oh, I actually beat the god to it. ...flown over in order to convince him of that very course of action. So Wu Kong warps back to Tripitaka, who offers him the clothes. Wu Kong all- Maybe this will make you think twice about pulling that stuff again. Oh boy! Is my bad behavior being rewarded again? Oh, yeah. I mean, up until the mountain, that's kind of what happened. Every time. Constantly. Yeah. Always a sucker for a new wardrobe, throws them on, finding that they fit him perfectly. He's rather less thrilled to discover that the hat is cursed, and when Tripitaka recites the spell Kuan Yin taught him, it shrinks and gives him a splitting headache. Okay, one. He can shapeshift. I'm assuming it's magical and just shapeshifts with him. Two. Turn it off, turn it off, turn it off. Oh, my God. It's basically playing Nickelback. Why would they do that? No, oh, you were planning on listening to me from now on? Not on your life. Discover that the hat is cursed, and when Tripitaka recites the spell Kuan Yin taught him, it shrinks and gives him a splitting also, headache. Of course, it wouldn't Inuyasha, be much of a cursed of artifact ah. if he could take it off. Why is this harder to pick up than a mountain? <laughs> off, so it's also spot welded to his head. After a You're few very of Buddhist. Wukong trying furiously to escape the hat by any means necessary, he eventually resigns himself to good? the fact I that he won't you. be able we're to get to his usual hijinks anymore. So the dynamic duo continue on... Wait, why can't you just fly us there? My cloud only carries the pure of heart. Really? No. Technically, he's very, very innocent in the sense that he just doesn't really care. He doesn't think evil thoughts. He just does things. And they happen to be evil. I'm sure it's different in canon or in the actual novels, but yeah, that is kind of weird. Words with the balance of power now tilted slightly more evenly. It doesn't take long before they arrive at a Ooh. nice calm stream that happens to be home to an enormous fuck you dragon. I mean... Versus Wukong already, he's kind of like the endgame boss. <laughs> Pretty cool art, though. Wukong nopes the hell out of there with Tripitaka in tow, and wait, the dragon wait, takes wait, the wait. opportunity. Wukong nopes the hell out of there with Save Tripitaka the horse. in tow, and the dragon takes the opportunity to eat Tripitaka's horse. So Tripitaka oh. freaks out, since without a ride, he... Rawr! No, 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 son! You need to get my oars back! I think that ship has sailed, dude. <laughs> it's funny that he would actually run from a dragon, though. Honestly, I've got to surprise him and just go fight it. He's stranded, but he's also too scared to let Wukong no, leave him alone. Don't leave me alone here. You need to make up your mind. <laughs> he's just going dragon in the background. Uh, but a bit of timely divine intervention arrives right. to protect Tripitaka, leaving Monkey free to confront the dragon. So they fight it out for a bit, but the years. dragon's like, screw it, and dives to the river bottom and refuses right. to come out. Wukong. To be fair, that is probably the smartest move when fighting Wukong. Everyone else gets their ass kicked usually. Actually, literally everyone got their ass kicked except him. First real fight. ...to confront the dragon. So they fight it out for a bit, oh, but the dragon's dude. like... 
Ugh. Nope. He literally noped out right away. Screw it and dives. Hey, wait. Come up and fight me like a man or a dragon. I don't care. Just fight me. <laughs> to the river bottom and refuses to come out. I Who love this. Magic Ooh, look at the big scary monkey king. Can't even beat up one measly dragon. You know what? And again, draws the did. dragon out again, only for the dragon to turn into a water snake and run away. At this point, Wukong is done, but the local mountain spirits tell him that they- Wait, they just ran- Okay, sure, why not? Wasn't that the horse guy Quan Yin brought for the pilgrim? Well, that was a very helpful spirit, honestly. Wukong actually has been better behaved as a companion. This dragon is actually under orders by Quan Yin to help Son them. Son of a- so the spirits goes and gets her, and after a brief digression where boss. Wukong vents at her about the cursed hat thing, she draws out the dragon- Dude, what the heck? Oh, wait. Man, chill out for like five seconds. <laughs> I love this. This is probably my favorite thing. Just like dragging Gogs down. Just help. <laughs> he draws out the dragon, and Wukong picks a fight with him, and too. there's Look, this asshole. Day, all right. Anyway, Quan Yin gets the cat thing. She draws out the dragon, and Wukong picks a fight with him, too. Look, he's had a trying day, all right? Anyway, Quan yeah. Yin gets the dragon to turn into a horse for Tripitaka to replace the one he ate. And then, to make Wukong stop sulking, she gives him three get-out-of-danger-free magical leaves. So now... How many types of immortality does he need? Does this count as one type or another three? You know, people said in the comments of the last video that he literally just becomes the ultimate set, like plan B extraordinaire of every possible survival option. It, it just gets worse, isn't it? He just gets more not die. -y. Yeah, that totally makes up for me for the loss of my freedom. I've always wanted a horse who could eat me. Snort. <laughs> I love this. Especially because everything magical, like the hair, the leaves, the this goes circlet, crown, whatever, are all golden. <laughs> With the matter having been resolved to everyone's satisfaction, our dynamic trio continue westward. So anyway, they continue on and arrive Certainly at still yet another monastery run by a sketchy old monk. Long story short, the monk Okay. You youngster need a place to spend tonight. I am literally orders of magnitude older than you. He means yes. Yeah, he is, unless he's actually a demon. Honestly, with how things are going so far, I'm assuming he's just another god. Sure, the monk lays eyes on that really fancy monk robe Tripitaka got way back Please when. Be it's called a cassock, by the way, and takes it into his head to steal it. And to that end, okay. he decides the best way to go about it is to burn down his own monastery. Well, that's not very zen of him. So now, I'm not exactly a smart man when it comes to numbers, English major, but wouldn't the monastery cost more than the robe? Maybe monasteries were just a dime a dozen back in ancient China. It's those advanced building techniques of putting logs up by hand. So Wukong smells the smoke, weighs his options, and decides the best way to solve the situation Think without pissing through. off Tripitaka is to let the monks burn their monastery to the ground. But he can't be mad if I don't do anything. To be fair, they're probably doing everyone else a favor because anyone else stopping here would probably get robbed as well. But first he borrows a fireproof Thanks, cloak dude. from his heavenly buddies no problem, to make bro. sure Tripitaka and the horse don't burn with it. Is it just me, or is Monkey on shockingly good terms with all the people he beat the hell out of in the last video? I, I said I wasn't going to get into the tropes, but dear god, he's actually doing the trope that became Nanoha beating people into friendship. And also Dragon Ball- He's literally the friendship trope! I'm going to beat you in the face so hard you become my friend? Or, you I beat you in the face so hard you never want to actually piss me off again. Could be either one, and he's doing it so far. The fire eventually burns itself out, and Tripitaka finally wakes up, only for them to find out that during all the Not confusion, none of a this. mountain demon came by. Where are my clothes? Thanks for saving my life again, son. I return. I'll never do the hat thing again. He's about to do the hat thing. And stole the cassock. Also, the patriarch monk killed himself. Oh, he comes this? Eh, he kind of deserved it. So anyway, Wukong zips on over to the demon's mountain and they fight, but the demon calls a lunch break and locks what? himself in his mountain. So Wukong zips back to the ruined monastery for snacks, then returns to the mountain to sneak in. So Wukong disguises himself as the old monk and has a little tea party with the mountain demon, and then they fight more. But the demon runs away again, and Wukong decides to call in the cavalry. He goes to Kuan Yin, but together they figure out another way to- This better be good. No, no, trust me, this is gonna be great. He just, it just he lost his freedom, but honestly, did he really lose it? Oh god, he's getting more fights this way, and everyone runs away from him. That seems to be the entire story here. Everyone runs away from him after he, they know they can beat him. Way to sneak in and get the cassock back. Quan Yin disguises herself as a Taoist friend of the demons, and Monkey King disguises himself as a present from that friend, a pill of immortality. Long story short, Wukong beats up the demon from the inside. Ew. Quan Yin retrieves the cassock and- Um, technically that was a pill of immortality, and everything else he ate. Son, can we go now? I love how Red's actually drawing herself absolutely freaked out here. Oh my god. The cassock and Wukong returns its trip 
got your clothes. Why do you smell weird? Don't ask questions you don't want to know the answer to. But even the narrator is freaked out. You know it's wrong. <laughs> Okay, and they continue on their merry way. Will Sun Wukong learn to value friendship over his impulsive desires? Will Tripitaka succeed in his quest to the Thunderclap Monastery? Will that stupid horse ever remember he can fly? Find out next time on Journey to the West. Wait, that horse can fly and it literally just forgot? You know, at this point, it's not even the biggest one. They probably told it not to in canon for all I know. Or they just completely ignored it. I don't know. I'm not going to ask too many questions. Yeah, I'm still gonna call it Triple Taco. It's, I know it's Triple Taco, but dear God, it sounds like Triple Taco. I'm not the only one who hears that, right? Probably am. Yeah, I'm aware of that. I'm still gonna do it though, because I mean, if I can't be wrong, then that's actually very different than normal because I'm usually very wrong. Uh, overall though, I like this. I like how Red is definitely showing us, yes, here's all the ways things are going on. And I know from an initial audience who isn't used to tropes in general, this is very much a source thousands of years ago where it's like, oh, wow, surprise. Here, it's like, oh, wow, I recognize the surprise from other things. And I just Sorry, the only one I really had to call out was the entire beating people to friendship thing because I don't think it was quite that way, but it does seem like he's on good terms. And maybe that's the entire thing. I beat people up and then we become friends. Is that what it came from this? I don't know, but it kind of sounds like even that trope is based on this. How many things are actually based on this? I don't know. But if I got a list, I'm assuming it would just be most. And yeah, pulling a trope or a plot element or just monkeys everywhere. I just, uh, I kind of want to know more. Maybe once I finish catching up on everything they've done, I'll just actually read it. Mm, I'll probably read a more in-depth, accurate to lore summary that's less sarcastic just because I want to know the original. Kind of like I want to get more into the life of, what's his name? I was going to say H.G. Wells. Why do I want to say that? No. Uh, the guy who did Cthulhu. Why am I blanking on his name? I literally have no idea why. Uh, well, it's probably just, I'm an idiot. What's the prize there? More importantly, <laughs> this was good. and I can't wait to do the next one. So I probably won't. I'll just do it right away. I mean, I'll put it up later, but I'll do it myself for you. I can do that. <laughs> the best thing about making your own videos, you can just do what you want. The bad thing is, I usually want to take a nap and... Yeah. Actually, a nap sounds really good. I think I'll do that. Then I'll watch another one. As you can tell, the coffee is hitting very hard right now. So I probably should actually go take that nap to calm down. <laughs> All the same. For everyone watching, thanks. I'm going to go take that nap because I am very caffeinated and that probably is a problem. I will very much annoy my wife and I'd rather not do that after last night when I was recording it at past midnight and uh, woke her up. Yeah, the couch is fun. More importantly, for everyone watching, thanks. I'll see you guys in the next one. If there's anything I missed, let me know. You know there's a drill. There's a drill? Eh, sure, why not? You know there's a drill. Hit that drill down below. You know, considering what I'm saying and the... Uh, let's pretend I didn't do that. Uh, yeah, future me, please edit that out for my own embarrassment. But yeah, you guys know the drill. There's a link below to the original video. Hit it up. Because, I mean, it, it's awesome. And if you haven't, do that. It's just good. Also, if you watch the original one, you don't have to have me pausing constantly to just laugh my ass off. I just do that because I enjoy it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios.